Elsewhere on this website, you'll find my videos talking about dream enactment behavior, REM sleep behavior disorder, RBD. The big question, of course, is how do we treat it at this time? This is a particularly dangerous symptom because about a third of patients will either injure themselves or their bed partner. I've seen people break their bed partner's nose, for example, or fall out of bed and injure themselves. So what do we do? Well, firstly, we take away those confounding things. You know, are we drinking alcohol late at night? Are there any medications that might aggravate this? Is there sleep apnea that could be treated and get rid of this behavior? If we eliminate those and we still have the behavior, then we need to make the bed environment safe. So perhaps a bolster, a pillow between you and your bed partner so that you don't lash out in the middle of the night. Having the bed lower so that if you do fall out of bed that you'll only fall a small distance. And of course trying to clear the bed environment. We often see very sharp edged cabinets by the side of the bed or glasses and um, you know, overnight jars by the side of the bed that could all be knocked over and cause uh, injury if you fell on them. So you have to clear those bed environments. And then there's, the, if you like, the pharmacological, the medical treatments for this symptom. And here we really haven't got great evidence to guide us as to what is the most effective therapy, but generally there are a couple of choices that patients can try. Probably the um, most well tolerated of those is a slow release preparation of the brain hormone melatonin. So many of you will be familiar with the idea of melatonin as a chemical that regulates your cycle day and night and is associated of course with patients taking it for jet lag to try and restore their sleep patterns. We don't use melatonin or slow release melatonin for REM sleep behavior disorder in that way. We actually believe that it can change the way that REM sleep, that dream stage of sleep, is, uh, is being um, regulated in the brain and can actually reduce the amount of dream and act behavior. Now, there is ongoing work looking to see whether we have any evidence to support that use of therapy, but we do realize that it's quite a safe therapy, and at the moment, the open-label trials that have been done suggest that it can also be effective in a large number of patients. The second medication choice that's commonly used is a drug called clonazepam, and clonazepam effectively comes from the benzodiazepine family, which is the same as temazepam and some of the other sleeping tablets you may be familiar with. Clonazepam has a slightly different action to those drugs. It works in a slightly different way, but again, it's there to try and stop this dream behavior. The downside of a drug like clonazepam is in the older patients, it can cause more in the way of daytime sleepiness and also impair things like balance and increase the risk of falls. But I think if you are a patient who's struggling with dream enactment behavior, there are some therapies and some approaches out there that you should discuss with your specialist.